right, this is something that's been burning me up for a minute, y'all. We got to talk about this. This is the Black Manifesto, Detective Obfuscation, by Jerry K. Fry, Journals of Black Studies, Volume 5, Issue 1, September 1974, pages 65 through 67. Just in case, you know what I'm saying, I'm giving this site out there so y'all can look it up yourselves. You know what I'm saying? And this is kind of burning me because this happens to me that deal with some today. You know, on May 4th, 1969, James Foreman interrupted Riverside Church and read the, the 2500 word Black Manifesto to make specific demand on the congregation in response to interruptions in other churches and highly contested debated editorials. The purpose of the article is one to describe the conception of Black Manifesto and record the characteristic responses of laymen and religious leaders. The present analysis of the rhetorical impact of the manifesto documents provide interpretations of conclusion based on analysis. All right, so on April 27th in Detroit on Wayne State campus, setting for the Black Economic Development Conference, the NBEDC, co-sponsored by the Black Council of Churches, the Episcopal, the Apostolical Church, Interreligious Foundations for Community Organization, the IFOC, damn, and other agencies, the conference was supposed to bring black leaders together to discussion the core of the economic aspects of black power. But one of the invited speakers, James Foreman, took the meeting and demanded an endorsement of a document called the Black Manifesto. Depending on one source of information, the conference was attended by 400 leaders who voted in favor of his proposal, 187 to 63. So there's 400 to 700 leaders there, and only about 200 voted, only over 200, 250, mm. with many abstentions. As we know, we just talked about the manifesto demanded a half a million dollars, a half a billion dollars of reparation from American Christian Jewish churches and vowed to the back to the man with church seizures, disruptions and demonstrations and force by whatever means necessary. The money thus obtained will provide funding, a southern land bank to fund community farms, four publishing houses to generate capital for jobs, four TV networks to counter the racist propaganda that fills the television networks, a research skills center a Center for Training and Communication, a grant for a national welfare rights organization to assist welfare workers and recipient organizations, a National Black Labor Strike and Defense Fund, and an International Black Appeal headed by Foreman will raise money for the NBC to develop co-ops in Africa and support African liberation movements, a Black Defam Anti-Defamation League, wow, and Black universities, a Black Anti-Defamation League. Hmm, let's see what happens. The author of the Black Manifesto was James Foreman, former officer of the Black Panther Party and former executive director of SNCC, Students and Nonviolent Coronation Committee. He had dropped out of leadership spotlight when SNCC had undergone a periodic leadership of Stokely Marmichael and H. Rapp Brown. However, he remained director of international affairs for SNCC. In requesting for economic assistance containing the Black Manifesto was certainly not an original idea of Foreman's. Hmm. In addition, it was likely that Foreman borrowed some of the concepts, the economic concepts, from Martin Luther King, who all who have been assassinated a year later, earlier, excuse me, a year earlier. When King was assassinated, the highest religious oligarchs, the Catholics, the Jews, the Orthodox, and the Protestants, called for a realization of King's economic bill of rights for the disadvantaged. Hmm. It required about 10 to 12 billion for the combined efforts of a private and public sectors, including the religious community. The portion of this manifesto would specify the needs of black people contain little controversy or originality. The threat of the aspect of the manifesto reflected on the popular philosophy of attention getting revolutionary radical tactics. Thus, the introduction and the conclusion of the manifesto was at most attention to respond. The response to the manifesto quite naturally included both positive and negative statement. Most responses were qualified in one way or another. Even those who completely positive towards it called it the amount of money requested astonishingly modest. Astonishingly modest. So $12 billion for what we've been through was astonishingly modest. Even people that agree with it. Okay. Which is true. Because, you know, we need more than that. June 13, Foreman answered some critics by collectively raising the amount to a half a billion to $3 billion. And those who viewed the manifesto negatively also called attention to the philosophy of reparations. The language and the rhetoric employed and the tactics utilized, all the response of various churches and religious leaders will obviously contain a variation in general. The reaction can classify as either positive or negative. 
the characteristics of positive and responses and negative responses follows. Okay, so we got Ernest Campbell, New York Riverside Church. He agreed with it. You know what I'm saying? Lucius Walker, one of the um, IFOC executive director and loyally supported the manifesto. 200 members of the Minister of Interfaith Association of Harlem favored the principle of the demand, but not the physical philosophy. The Epistolic Church submitted $200,000 in response to the demand, although the money although the money went to a more acceptable national committee of black churchmen. What? <laughs> the members of the National Council of Churches General Board pledged to raise a half a million dollars immediately proposal to the assembly seeking tens of millions of dollars for black economic development. Thomas Kilroy Jr., the first president of the American Baptist Convention supported form a proposal in substance. According to Time Magazine, the Presbyterians authorized a drive to detain 50 million for general workers against poverty, the most generous response to foremen. The annual conviction of the Association of Laymen, the Catholics, endorsed reparations principle and asked for a yearly, a yearly sum of 400 million of the, from the U.S. Catholic Church for black control organizations. And finally, the World Council of Churches set up a Secretariat on Racism with 15,000 budget and 200,000 reserve funds for oppressed people, in quotations, and asked member donation to give more than 300,000 more. There were also positive responses to the manifesto, other positive responses to the manifesto. Let's see. Other, other positive manifestos. It should be noted that none, not one of the above allocated money directly to either the NBEDC or the IFO, but rather the money went to an already existing agency or newly formed programs. However, even though the action was thus qualified, it remained a positive type reaction. So when they did get this money, it didn't really go to the hands that needed it. You know what I'm saying? It went to shit that they already reinforced. You know, like that's like an atonement for sins, you know. All right, let's check out the negative responses. So the negative responses to the black manifestos as follows. Bed Rustin head of the A. Philip A. Randolph Institute and organizer of the 1963 March on Washington, made a cause as a, a caustic negative statement. Mm. The idea of reparations is ridiculous. If my great grandfather picked cotton for 50 years, then he deserves some money, but he's dead and gone and nobody owes me anything. Bear Rustin, Bear, we gotta really look at Bear Rustin a lot because he really wasn't for black liberation. I mean, I'm sorry. He, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on bed that, you know, there's just, ugh. I know black homosexuals put him up there, but you know what I'm saying? You know, he told us to be nonviolent, but when the, when the Jews was taking out the Palestinians, he told them, go kill them, slaughter them all. You gotta look at bed. That's true story on that one, too. Daryl Hamilton, pastor of the Manhattan Community Church and chairman of the Liberal Party, described for him as a self-appointed individual who heads a paper organization. And it said to do business with foreman would be an insult to black people. The Baltimore Catholic Review, Roy Wilkins of the NAACP, of course, that's what the NAACP had to say. Roy Wilkins of the NAACP stated that giving money to blacks who were without credentials or competence would show contempt for black Americans in general and undercut those working through the democratic process. So that's, you know, the NAACP stands basically on reparations at that time, then probably still now. Something to look into. The Washington Cathedral Dean Francis B. Sayer refused to pay the $2 million demanded by a foreman and said the cathedral was not a collection agency and could not liquidate its assets. The Chancery Archbishop of Cardinal of Cook of New York simply rejected, saying the manifesto is closely joined to political concepts which are completely contrary to our American way of life. Mm. Bishop E. Hines rejected the manifesto and the methods. Even Negro church leaders expressed negative reaction. Uh-oh. The ne even the black church got in a negative reaction. Let's see what they said. Reverend H. Reverend J. H. Jackson, president of the National Baptist Convention of the United States, Inc., the largest, the nation's largest religious Negro religious group, said that manifesto carries a firm message of destruction the United States of America has ever been given. Mm. The Amsterdam Times, the black press. An eventual Harlem Weekly newspaper rejected foreman tactics and disturbing the church services. Let's see, the Synagogue Council of America and a National Jewish Committee, Community Observatory Relations Community Council, 
let me say this again, the National Jewish Community Advisory Relations Council condemned the substance and the tactics of reparation proposal on both moral and practical grounds. Black clergymen from New Orleans described themselves as unalterable, opposed to the demand of methodology, the racism, and the subtle call for the desire and meaning of the economic problems as outlined in such manifesto. Such statement characterized a negative response. So that's what happened. So most of the black church was not down with reparations. Most of your black, as you see, most of your black organizations is not down for reparations. Because when the plan came out, they shot it down. So there's, you know, so let's see. I mean, what can you say more about that? The positive negative reaction seem to have agreed that the rhetoric of the manifesto and mythology at best was unfortunate indeed. However, perhaps one should consider the, the rhetoric strategy behind it. Former intentionally used such language and tactics as a predetermined purpose, predetermined purpose. The very first sentence of the manifesto introduction contained the words racism was consensually repeated 22 times in an eight page document. Using terms such as white, rich exploiters and racist who runs this word, racist white Caucasian churches and white racist imperialists, the US government is referred to as the most barbaric country in the world, the colonizer, racist America, the most vicious racist system in the world and a decadent society. The word demand is used 31 times. The thing that time is short is several times suggested. Suggested actions include a separation from schemes of black capitalism, black nationalism, and black power pimps to use force. We have had a chance to help to bring the government down and use whatever means necessary, including the use of force and power of the gun. It will be an armed confrontation, guerrilla war in the streets, and declare war on white Christian churches and synagogues. Although many illustrations could not be cited, perhaps these will suffice. The question is, was former using any particular rhetoric strategy in the manifesto? The answer is clearly yes. Consideration by Arthur Smith called objectification will clarify such strategy. Conveniently appropriating to our discussion, Smith had an entire chapter on strategies of revolutionary, and he defines objectification as follow. Another stratagem which is employed by, black, by the black agitator is objectification. It is, a, it is the agitated use of the language to the direct agreements of a particular group towards another collective body, such as an institution, nation, political party, or race. Heighten the rhetoric effectiveness in objectification is achieved by the use of derogatory names or titles. For this reason, the term whitey is more important than the white power structure. And the racist, hunky government excites more passion than does the phrase the white government. It seems clear that former use of language deferred to rhetoric strategy. And what about the demands in a particular declaration of war? Does this too severe the radical purpose? Does this too severe a radical rhetorical purpose? Again, the answer is yes. Such statements serve to terrify whites because of their mysterious and definite and vagueness. The reaction to the manifesto will cause some an over, which was some call a reaction, indicates former rhetoric served him well. The third question encompasses both rhetoric and tactics employed. How effective was the manifesto? The answer seemed to depend upon whether the goals of the manifesto were immediate or ultimate in the mind of Foreman. Only Foreman knows for sure, but we can speculate. It seemed Foreman's goal was to raise a half a billion dollars, later increased to, later increased to $3 billion for the BEDC. That goal was a miserable failure. The only recorded amount paid directly to the EBDC was an estimated figure of 22000 but in terms of money, earmarked, pledged, invested, disputed, requested from members of approved and appropriate, set aside for the purpose of improving lives of black in America, the manifesto had a successful impact on that perspective in the long term. So ever since the National had an impact on that in the long term, let's see what kind of impact did it have. Ever since the National Commission on the National Advisory Commission on Civil Rights Order point out the dismal plight of racism in this country in March of 1968, little direct action has been taken towards a solution for the black problem. The manifesto should be pointed out, it reveals an existing crisis more than a created one. Some conclusions from this story indicate the following. 
The manifesto effectiveness is negative when it's viewed in the short-term goals in the mind, positive as a catalyst in moving churches to examine and reorder long-term economic priorities. The general reaction of the church was to renew and enlarge existing programs for the disadvantaged and to institute new programs. The result to get a, a good accomplishment for the manifesto, there seemed to be sympathy for specific programs of the manifesto, but general disapproval of the rhetoric and tactics. The manifesto as a national movement was short-lived. It sparked a life, lasted less than a year from former's confrontation at Riverside Church. The marketist rhetoric and the dark threats alienated white sympathizer and the black community itself. Mm. When it's compared to the previous programs such as Freedom Budget, Domestic Marshall Plan, and Economic Bill of Rights for the Disadvantaged, it must be admitted the Black Manifesto secure more positive and active results. But Foreman's use of insipid logic in several instances within the Manifesto itself, one explains that he cautioned Blacks not to accept a few crumbs from economic assistance, then a brilliant example by demanding a few crumbs of a $15 nigga. Martin Luther King Jr. once made a statement with reference to the news media reaction or overreaction to speeches made he made on Vietnam, which seems to be very appropriate to the black manifesto effect. He said, anything that get white folks upset must have some good in it. <laughs> anything to get white people upset, this is according to Martin Luther King. Let me read it again. Martin Luther King once made a statement in reference to the news media reaction or overreaction to a speech he made on Vietnam, which seemed appropriate to the black manifesto effect. He said, anything that get white folks so upset must have some good in it. That's the key. The Black Manifesto certainly did accept many people for a short time at least, but many people was good in a square from its purple language and shock tactics. Perhaps the greatest conclusion started significantly was Ronald Getz of the Christian Century. In short, the Manifesto makes a fair rhetoric, but it does bite off more than it can chew. White churches didn't get anywhere they today are losing the fight with likes of James Foreman. And yet those black, those Christians who have actually read their Bibles, instead of merely displaying them regardless of Foreman rhetoric and tactics, are perhaps easily reminded of the prophet Amos. I hate you. I despise your feasts. I take them to light in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and cereal offerings, I will not accept them. And the peace offerings of your fatted beasts, I will not look upon them. Take away from me the noise of your song and to the melody of your harps. I will not listen to them. Let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. So, you know. But as I stated, though, as you've seen, this is, um, as I said before, this is from, um, let me work this up again. This is the Black Power, this is the Black Manifesto. Given by James Foreman, you know what I'm saying, and in, in the tactic of objectification. You know, it comes from the Journal of Black Studies, Volume 5, Issue 1, September 1974, page 65 to 76, which, you know, we just got through, well, I just got through reading bits and pieces of it, you know, the majority of it. But that's the kind of stuff we as people are dealing with, you know. As you seen, when he's trying to get the reparations, based on my, which we probably could have could have got. By then, after the death of Martin Luther King, black churches, NWC black organizations, they all stepped up and said no. The Jews said no, even though it's historical, that they all played their part in, in, you know what I'm saying, in doing what they did, they all said no. And looked like he was stupid. Of course, they gave a little bit of money, you know, but this is the game they playing. You know, the part about the Amos part, you know what I'm saying, that was pretty raw. You know, how you, that's how we should be. You know, we don't want your feast. We only want to, you know, like 4th of July. This is, I made this on the 2nd of July. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be take part taking your, you know, in your independence. You know, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to, I don't want that. Your peace offers, I ain't trying to peace up with you. You know what I'm saying? I only want to hear your music. You know, if it ain't produced by a black station and top down from black distributor on down, I don't even want to hear it. Your clothes ain't made by black designers, it's Pelly Pell. I know it's old school. If I around the house, then I ain't trying to mess with it. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't made by a black designer, that's how we need to be. I ain't trying to mess with it. You know what I'm saying? 
Hell, we didn't make this car and I ain't trying, ain't trying to drive it. Other races got that mentality. That's the kind of mentality we got to have. But as you've seen, as soon as we try to get reparations and he put the manifesto out there, Bear Rustin, Roy Wilkins, a lot of them jumped out there. Hurry up and said hell to the no. So, you know, that's the lesson of the day on the video. You know, the leadership, the real lesson of the day is the leadership from the grassroots. The leadership that's established now, the establishment leadership, is not going to help out the grassroots point blank, period. And that's the, style, that's, the, that's the lesson of the day. The leadership comes from within you. You going out there and making it happen. Me going out there and making it happen. Talking to myself too. That's where the leadership begins to come from. All right, now I hope y'all enjoy your day. Like I said, it's a wonderful day in my neighborhood. I heard sweating. Fat red nigga sweating, but enjoying the day. Enjoying life, man. Living in the present moment.